Hello there. Welcome to Business of Design. And we've called this one Project Interruptus. Because how else do you explain that everything is going great and suddenly the client wants to change things up? They have an idea. They think they know how to run the business a little bit better than you do. And you find yourself jumping through some hoops that maybe you had no intention of jumping through in the first place. We have an amazing guest today, a Business of Design member, and this is going to be shocking to those of you who are like me, but Jerrica Zarek says she is not a people pleaser. Have you ever met anyone like that? (laughs) I think that would be such a great quality to have as an interior design professional because so many of the problems I've made for myself over the years are due to the fact that I am a people pleaser. So right away, I already love this woman. She's amazing. I know you're going to want to follow this woman afterwards. So you go to the show notes and it gives all the information. She runs Jerrica Zarek Design. And on Instagram, she is Jerrica Zarek Interior Design. Jerrica launched her business in 2014. And if you didn't know that, if you didn't know that number, by the time you listen to her, you're going to feel like, at least this is my experience with Jerrica, that she's been running her business for 20, 25 years. It is that level of sophistication she has going on for herself, which is amazing. But she's only been running her business since 2014. She provides bespoke turnkey interiors for a discerning residential clientele. She says she's drawn inspiration from her traveling, which is wonderful. She has a degree in sculpture and an active interest in the art world. Jerrica says she directs her team to create designs that thoughtfully balance her aesthetic with the client's lifestyle. Both on and off job sites, Jerrica can be found carrying two tape measures, toddler socks, and a box of safety pins at all times. I love that. So not only is she fairly new to business, you know, relatively new to business, she's also a young mom. And Jerrica says she is not a people pleaser. What? Is that even possible? Do you even know anybody who's not a people pleaser? Most interior design professionals anyway, in my experience, are people pleasers. What a wonderful quality to be free of, (laughs) to be able to say, I'm not a people pleaser. Um, And Jerrica talks a little bit about the fact how she has to temper that with a little diplomacy from time to time. She has the wisdom and sage advice of someone who's been running a business a long, long time. She's on the podcast because she found herself with great clients, clients she really loves and respects, but suddenly things are going a little strange. The client has a lot of questions about her backend process and how she makes money. And she's going to talk it through with all of us. It's a great episode. I learned a lot and we're so glad you're here. Let me quickly turn the microphone over to Cheryl Horn, who has announcements, and then you'll get a chance to meet Jerrica. Thanks, Kimberly. Well, in 2022, Business of Design is hitting the road, and we couldn't be more excited. So mark your calendar, check out the website, and join us for these events if you can. January 24th to 26th, Business of Design will be at Las Vegas Market. We have partnered with Las Vegas Market to do a three-day morning seminar series. So we are going to be doing Business of Design's 15-step project management strategy. It's been quite some time since you've been able to access this program live. So it's going to be three mornings, nine to noon, each day, and then you're gonna have the afternoons to explore the market, which is great, sort of that that combination. So we've broken it into our three phases. Day one is steps one and two, project initiation. Day two, which is your steps three to five, which is design, research, presentation. And on day three, we're gonna be talking about project management, which is steps six through 15. So whether you're brand new to business of design or you've been doing this a while, join us for one day or all three days. I know we have so many members who say that they're you know, great at project management, but they struggle with the consultation and getting that contract signed or other way around, or they just need to really streamline phase two, going from trade day to the step four, all the work that happens at step four. I know that can be overwhelming for so many in preparation for that presentation. So if you need to focus on a single phase or you wanna join us for the full series, registration is open for that. 
Of course, we have member preferred pricing as well. So if you sign up for a single day, it's $6.95 per day if you're not a member. But if you are, you're going to save $100 uh, per day for those tickets. And then, of course, if you sign up for all three days, you're going to save even more. So non-members, you're going to save $300 if you sign up for the full series. And members will go ahead and save $600. So make sure you are logged into your Business of Design member account before registering. Again, all the details are on the website and we are so excited to be partnering with Las Vegas Market once again. Of course, we have the Elite Retreat coming up in April and we're gonna be in Santa Monica. So we've been talking about that one a little bit lately. Details are on the website. Mark your calendar, December 15th is the deadline for early bird registration. You're gonna save $300 and we're only asking for a 50% deposit to save your spot. So make sure you register before that date if you're interested. For either of these events, as always, reach out to me, Cheryl, at businessofdesign.com if you have any questions. But again, details are at businessofdesign.com. Thanks so much. Welcome to the Business of Design podcast with Kimberly Selden. Business of Design is the world's best business training for interior design professionals like you. We have the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to consistently satisfy clients, increase profitability, and run your projects. Like a boss. Unlike traditional coaching, BOD is a fast track to immediate results. Don't try to do this alone. Join today and you'll have access to hundreds of targeted training modules, plus member perks like BOD Live events, member-only podcasts, preferred pricing, and the support of an engaged community of peers. We all know design matters. At Business of Design, we think designers matter too. It's Jerrica, right? I'm saying it right. Yes, you're saying it right. Yeah. Such a mm-hmm. cute name. How did your okay. parents come up with that? You know, that's what happens when um, a parent lets a four year old like help name their <laughs> their little sister. So it's actually a cartoon character from like the late '80s, um, Gem and the Holograms. It's Jerrica, record label exec by day, turns into Gem, the rock star at night. Um, so lots of alter egos uh, in college. So, oh my gosh, that's so cool! Yeah. And did when, like when people meet you, do they know that reference? Because I don't know they that. Don't. Okay. They don't. Okay. No. It could have been you. Could have been like Scooby or something. Oh my gosh, Scooby Doo or that's I, think good. My, I think my sister wanted to name me Gem, but my parents were like, "Jerica sounds nice." Uh, and every once in a while, I'll meet like another Jerrica in like a grocery store, and we'll have this moment of like we like gravitate to each other like sisters. <laughs> it is weird when it, I do understand how that feels. I was getting my nails done one day, and this woman beside me was talking to her friend, and she said, "I made lunch for Raleigh, blah blah blah." And I said, "What Raleigh? You have a Raleigh? You know, like I'm just butting into their conversation because <laughs> you, when you when you don't when you have a name that you don't hear very often, you yeah. get kind of excited." Anyway. Hi, how are you? Hello. I'm doing good. We just discussed the fact that you have a toddler at home. What's her name? Her name's Aurelia. Aurelia, that's beautiful. That Thank is not you. a cartoon character. No, I wanted to make sure it was a real, like, historical name, but, like, really unique. Um, and, of course, like, two blocks away, also, uh, a neighbor has an Aurelia that's 18 months old. So no. it's just, uh, um, you know, people how in there. Early, early 30s living in my neighborhood, like the name. It's not a popular name. How is that even possible? And what did Aurelia do that was inspiring? Oh, so Aurelia is um, Julius Caesar's mother. Um, so that it became the surname of like Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic philosopher and the Roman uh, emperors. Okay. So you spell yes. it with an A. Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. That, there ends my Greek knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a beautiful name. Nice to see you. So yeah, yeah, so we discussed the fact that you have a toddler and you begin your day with three double espressos. And I respect and admire that. And I emulate that behavior yes. as well. <laughs> I would give up just about anything but coffee. I just, I'm not even interested a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. You just, you can't. Yeah. I would give up. Yeah. Wine at night. If it meant choosing between the two. Like, don't make me choose. Don't make me choose. choose right. Yeah. I would choose coffee. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. This is not why people have tuned in to listen to our preference. <laughs> it should be. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's the new podcast. You're the new host, Uh, but actually we, we did want to talk business of design and you had a question about a client who um, asked you something and you're just wondering how to respond. So tell everybody uh, a little bit about the project and what the question is and how it came up. Yeah, definitely. So um, in all respects, these, these clients are wonderful clients my ideal clients in like most, most ways don't question the design. Let me do whatever I want. Great, healthy budgets. But the client also has made his living uh, with a business, making sure insurance claims are correct. So he is looking at all of the data and making sure uh, that we're following everything to the T. And so it's a lot of spreadsheet creation and things like that. So wait, um, can I ask, is he creating the spreadsheets or is he asking Uh, you to create his own spreadsheet uh, that he wants me to feed some data into? But uh, I'm also super confident in my Excel ability. So I create my own master spreadsheet so I can make sure and I dictate that, you know, like he wants to know what I'm buying the product for, right? Because I'm using your your contract, right. which dictates that I'm splitting my discount with the client. Um, and he just wants to make sure that we're splitting it to the cent, right? So I say what I bought it for, what the MSRP is for, right? There's a lot of calculation that goes into that. Um, there, there is in fact, okay, this is, this yes. is already super interesting. Like I yes. get that these are lovely people and you're enjoying the project. I also yes. have had that type of client before who has wanted to be heavily involved in making sure I did everything exactly as promised. And you can learn a lot from those clients, right? You can find out where your weak spots are. You can tighten them up. So the next client Mm -hmm. who will never ask ever again, I doubt you'll ever have anybody like this again comes along, but you'll learn a lot. But I do think there's already a problem Problems, maybe not the right word. There's a red flag for me when somebody who doesn't run an interior design business shows up at my door and tells me how to run it. And what, you know, even if it's just a limited example like this, where it's like, I need you to input your data into my spreadsheet. That's not part of your process, um, nor do you owe that person that level of, um, what's the word revelation you you don't owe that person that level that degree of laser focus into your business but you just went along with it because there's really nothing to hide right I want to be as transparent as possible it's something in my contract right that I do that formula I, I literally use your contract so you know exactly what that language is and I'm happy to you know be an open book on that sort of of thing and he, so, so thus far, I'm going to assume he hasn't discover, discovered any discrepancies. He hasn't said, aha, you're stealing money from me. That That's not Correct. going on. And I don't think he's looking for that sort of thing. I just think this is his nature. He is an actuarial, you know, person. He, he needs to just like get the data and um, that's just how his brain works. And that's how he's thinking that he's budgeting for the future of a project, right? This is, you know, a, a type of client that's building a, a million dollar house in Florida. As soon as we get the keys to it, we're gutting it, right? We're putting in, you know, $600,000 of, of updates. Um, and then my fees are on top of that. So I think he's just budgeting. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So tell us, tell us more. This is all so exciting. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're repeat clients. I, I did their condo here in downtown Milwaukee, um, where, you know, I can like literally see out of my studio, the beautiful tower that they, they live in. Uh, they bought it as a pied a terre and, uh, ended up just moving in there full time after their son, uh, uh, graduated high school and now they're empty nesters. And when you yeah. did the condo for them, did you also go through this mechanism of the Excel spreadsheet? No, and actually it was before I was a VOD member. So it was a previous contract where I did a flat fee, um, but it was like you know, one page of contract language and I didn't disclose how I was pricing product. So even though I was making more money on the product before, um, you know, I was marking up way more than uh, kind of the splitting the discount. My fees were a little lower um, to kind of hide that. I was kind of hiding the fees and the product sales. So they didn't have any questions on it, but the the budget was lower, right? It was $150,000 of, you know, furniture and some light updates. Um, 
Interesting. Okay. Okay. So, so keep going. Did you know from the very beginning when you signed up for the second project that he was going to ask for this additional step in your accounting process? He didn't. And I kept telling him that's what step 14 is about the final invoicing, the reconciling the accounts. Like typically we would do this at the end of the project. Um, but to make you happy, and especially since it's kind of a two-phase project anyway, where we bought all the furniture ahead of time, and then when we get the keys in November, then we demo, right, while everything sits in storage. So it's like, okay, we'll do it now midpoint, but just so you know, we'll do it at the end for all the other construction stuff. We don't have to do it after we buy every single thing. Right. <laughs> right. Interesting. So I we don't do that at the end. We just, no one's ever asked me, but I do yeah. understand that moment when the client asks for it and your choices, do I say no? which seems unreasonable given yeah, that like hiding. yeah yeah mm-hmm. given that you truly are doing you know you you want to be transparent so that mm-hmm. i understand how that seems unreasonable on the other hand it's also it also just feels like there's some kind of control problem and control struggle here um so i'm curious to know how it's going to go anyway so mm-hmm. keep ta- keep talking yeah. i'm this yeah. is fascinating to me yep so um you know we we bought all the products he asked me to create that kind of account reconciliation spreadsheet where we just make sure that we're splitting the discounts correctly. I think we were something like $900 difference from like what I thought I was going to buy something as. And then like, really I caught like a sale at mod shop or something. Right. And so it was a little less. Um, so it was like really close to what we had estimated. Right. $900 difference and like a you know $300,000 furniture purchase is really good <laughs> margins there. So mm-hmm. uh, he's super happy with that. I was able to say, okay, here's what we've spent. Here's kind of the construction estimate, right? Of course, we haven't seen the house yet. So these are all TVD numbers based off of drawings, right? Uh, we'll see what the trades actually come back with in November. Uh, so he's happy with that final budget number. But then uh, he started down the path of saying, well, this implementation fee uh, should not be charged on client total, right? This kind of what I've sold the furniture to him for. It should be based on what I buy it for. Right, the because then he he realizes yeah. that he then would have an advantage. He would, he would save more money and you would lose a little bit of money. Exactly. Um, and, you know, in the contract, it clearly outlines that the, the implementation fee is based on client budget. Um, so I kind of leaned on that. And um, I, I posted this to the Facebook community and um, I got a really great response back, um, kind of some verbiage to say it, you know, not aggressively. I'm not a people pleaser. Uh, I'm the type of person I don't yield. Um, I don't negotiate. I it's not in my nature. To do wow, so, um, you I are be, like super very, aggressive. You're very special. I mean oh. that because most of the designers we we meet, and certainly myself, are people pleasers. So what a fantastic ability to not be that. I need a little bit of it though, because at the end of a project, when it I'm going to be leaning on my client service person a little bit more to like provide those client updates. Cause I'm like, leave me alone and let me do what I need to do. But yeah. that's not a great way to um, no, like, provide service to clients. So. There's a, there's a balance there, but the point yeah. is you didn't feel immediately the need to cave based no. on his suggestion that you're doing it the wrong way. And yeah. I just, for clarifying sake, he's not asking you to reveal your sources. It's not about tell me where you bought this chair. It's mm-hmm. really about just tracking those numbers. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, so go ahead. What I like really wanted to do in the moment, <laughs> 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 you know, was to like, yell at him, right. And say like, this is my business. I'm running it this way. And he also does have well, a little bit of history of wanting to know like how much I'm paying contractors, right, like which people is, that work for me, which is even as, though like I'm not charging him that. So, right. Yeah. I understand you. I mean, yeah. you're not wrong to say mm-hmm. now you're inserting yourself into the mechanics of how my business model works. That's not right. your job. You mm-hmm. signed up to work for me with the business model I came to you with. It's not a mm-hmm. negotiation. I'm not right. willing to negotiate it. Mm-hmm. And you want to know what I'm paying my contractors really when you walk into Ben and Jerry's do you know what they pay for sugar do you know what they pay for chocolate chips I don't think you do Mm -hmm. exactly I think that we're 
I didn't have to go into that level of <laughs> detail, even though I wanted, wanted to basically, I, um, off of the kind of advice of the Facebook community, which is like super great and helpful. I, you know, said that in order to do a flat fee project successfully, I've looked at the past seven years of data and how long does it take me to do, uh, you know, an implementation phase, right? Those steps six through 15. Um, yes, that's a lot of stuff. Steps. They've already paid the flat fee for the steps one through five, but that's just, you know, a third of the project. We still have, you know, six more months to go type of thing. Yeah. So uh, looking at that, using a percentage, I've based it off of the client budget. If I were to do it off of my wholesale, it would be a higher percentage because it all nets out the same. Right. So one way or the other, my mm-hmm. business model is going to protect my business to make sure I'm financially healthy. Exactly. Um, He did then uh, start talking about how the kind of the money that I'm making off of the products um, is basically a fee kind of charged to the client. And when you take that like markup into account with my implementation fees, now my, uh, you know, percentage of, uh, of design fees to the project is something like 25, 30% um, of the project. And he also told me that was out of line with industry standards. Oh my goodness. Hello. <laughs> industry standards. Where are you? I don't know where you are. I was like, oh, you don't know we're industry. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Yeah. No, that's not a thing actually, yeah. mister. Um, yeah. And the reality is I... If this is a capitalist society. I could charge whatever I want. It, and you've oh. already agreed to the terms. I'm not even sure why we're having this conversation. Yeah. So I wonder what's making him spin spin in this way. Yep. And I asked him, did something in the budget change? That was my first question out of my mouth. I think I just had recently listened to a podcast of you, like about this topic where I asked, has the budget changed? Do we need to revise something, right? Maybe I choose a different wallpaper or we don't do wallpaper, you know, something like that. And he said, no, the budget hasn't changed. We were just in Arizona and we're thinking about buying a third home. So we're just wanting to make sure that we're sticking to this other budget. A so third I home? Like, well, you dig like do a you... carrot in front of my face right. for like another project. But... That, that, is, that does sound like a carrot. It also yeah. sounds like a third home. Huh. Some people have no home. Is that really okay to have a third home? I mean, isn't that the exact same argument that he just threw at you about your pricing? I mean, you're making money on design fees and you also want to make money on procurement. Is that right? Uh, I don't know if somebody should have three homes Sir, yeah, and that is what he, he he did ask me. Is this right? I think he was meaning. He was like, other than your contract saying it, do you think it's right to charge both of these things? And I was like, yes, yes. I said, I think you know my answer. It's yes, a hundred percent. It's right. I'm not. Yeah. This was not. This was highly intentional. Highly <laughs> intentional. I am running a strategic business, and we are designed to be profitable. Yeah, and then so he was asking if. He does buy another home, right? Of course, he'll use them. They're super great people. He's been respectful throughout the whole process of kind of, you know, it's been professional kind of language uh, back and forth. So, But the point is, he, if, <laughs> you, if he wanted to work yeah. with you again. Um, oh, that, that's right. Yeah. Uh-huh. If yeah, he wanted to work um, with me again, so he say, how do we get around these implementation fees in the future? We don't. And I said, we could switch to hourly, an hour, the hourly contract. But I will say it will net out to be that percentage. Right? Yeah. The, the, but the, really the answer is we don't get around them. I don't have a business model where you can mm-hmm. hire me and pay me a portion of what I need mm-hmm. to be profitable. This really? is how we work. And now this is the second time you've hired us and provided mm-hmm. we are going to make you happy. You'll have mm-hmm. to make a decision if you see the value in hiring us a third and a fourth and a fifth time. Yeah. That's great language. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit, the horse has left the barn, buddy. The, at the time to negotiate oh. the fee structure is before you sign the contract. Once you sign the contract, that January. is the deal. Right. Yeah. It was January and now we were having this conversation. I think it was yeah early October and we were having this. I once I had know. this client send me this graph chart and it was, um, he, he was asking me some questions around the time of monthly billables, how many clients we had, how many designers we had, the average size pro- he was just I thought it was just idle curiosity. He sends me this chart that says, if you charge everybody the same way you charge me, you could be making, and I forget what the number was, but it was something yeah. like $700,000 
on, uh, you know, in a year. And I said, yeah. And he said, I don't, I don't think that's right. I don't think designers make that. And I said, whoa, wait, what? Like, that's is there some limit? Yeah. I, I was unaware that I was supposed to remain small and not be profitable. You please share where you're getting that, you know, information from. But it was so, in this case, he wasn't, he wasn't a lovely man. He was kind there was kind of an arrogance. Like you're a designer. Designers don't make that much money. And I'm just like, hello. Yeah, we do. And for yeah. people who really appreciate and value and respect the services we provide. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's, it makes me question like, so my client, like he had his own business, he sold his business, right? He's been super profitable. Uh, I think he understands that I have the right to be a profitable business. Sure. And when you throw out numbers like this graph of making $700,000 as a business, I'm sure that was a time where you were a huge operation or, you know, like, just like you had staff, like you should be making, you could be making more, right? There's yeah. so many firms out there that are, you know, making multi-million dollar, you know, profit. And why not? Why not us? And and why not? Like well, there is no limit. I don't owe you a cap. I don't I don't need to stay just above the poverty level because this is the career that I've chosen. Mm-hmm. Um it was so strange to me. It's like, uh-huh, yeah, so like it, it just, it's like it occurred to him actually, oh my God, you actually make money because I do think that there's a big swath of society who thinks interior designers and decorators are just like kind of dabbling in a little side hustle yeah. and they don't really make money. And I, and I think par- partly because 90% of designers don't make money. So when, when they meet, you know, one of the 10% who do it, maybe it's a bit of a shock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I found out that even with vendors, like a vendor was once surprised that I wasn't just like doing it on the side while I had my baby. I was like, oh no, I'm still a business. <laughs> like, still doing this full time. <laughs> yeah. I still have staff. Yeah. Still right. have to pay people. Yeah. Right. No, the vendors could use some educating as well. There's no question about it. So it, it's funny, you know, when Cheryl said Jerrica has a question she wants to do on the podcast, I thought it was just going to be the typical like double dipping. You can't, mm-hmm. you can't charge multiple ways on a single project? And the answer Mm -hmm. is, of course you can. It's just, you know, exactly like a cell phone. You buy the phone and then you buy data and then you buy roaming and then you, you know, whatever other Mm -hmm. bells and whistles, you buy iCloud, you buy, you, you, you don't get it all because you bought the phone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And when he first sent that, he sent it to me in a really detailed email with a screenshot of his, um, his spreadsheet, was saying that I was making 30% on the project. Right. And so when I first got that, I was like, I was, I was super nervous. You know, it's one of my bigger projects, um, that I've, that I've had. Um, and I didn't want to lose it, right. Cause we did all the design. I'm like, how, I don't want to lose the construction phase. Cause I have all this furniture in for, you know, like that right. would be a really weird thing to implement on. I, like, I need to do the full project. To right. Make it, like, but if he's great. really a businessman, that is so inaccurate. You, you made, wow. you did not make air quotes, 30%. You, yeah. that doesn't factor in overhead expenses, right? I mean, that's exactly. ridiculous. Like mm-hmm. you, you can't just look at income. You can't mm-hmm. stand in a store and go, wow, hundred people made a purchase and bought a hundred dollars. And that person took home a hundred thousand dollars. No, they didn't. Yeah, exactly. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you know, the response could have been like, Ooh, we are a little shy of our targeted profit margin. So thank you for pointing that out. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I had to, you know, like really, my husband had some good, good advice. He's like, you don't need the spreadsheet's great, right? They want to see the numbers, but really you need to sell the vision again. Like, unfortunately it's been months since you have a presentation. Maybe he's just not super excited. All you're doing is invoicing him. So I had to start the call, like super excited. Like we're still loving this project. Like, Oh, you're like, you know, new custom glass for those cabinet doors. There's like a sample just came in and it's so amazing, right? I had to resell like the vision of it, uh, which is exhausting. (laughs) 
It's exhausting if you're not a people pleaser. Yeah, yeah. But good for you. That is really good advice because yeah. the truth is you need to get him back focused on what he should be focused on. He's, he, you don't need him to run the internal numbers in your business. And besides, it's a flat fee. So in point of fact, with a flat fee, I can make as much as I want. It, mm-hmm. It's really none of his concern at all. The concern for him is, am I delivering what he's purchased? And the answer exactly. is, yeah, absolutely. So it sounds like all is well and things are moving forward. All is well. Um, I did get another email from him after um, uh, our our big phone conversation. I think it was last week, Wednesday, and I got another um, email from him on Friday night, again saying, "Are you sure you want to charge the implementation fee?" <laughs> you and I ignored need to- it over the weekend, right? I don't email on weekends, oh. so I ignored it. And I get a phone call from him Monday morning, like first thing. <laughs> I was like, yes, I'm sure this is, this is correct. Oh my gosh. Okay, right. buddy. Now you got to, you got to stay out of the brown liquor. It's doing something crazy to you. Like Friday night email followed by a Monday morning phone call. No, this is now that's the problem, right? That, that, so that goes back to the very first moment where he said, I want you to input your data into my spreadsheets. For me, that's the fight right there. Not I'm using fight air quotes. That's the mm-hmm. moment where I say, that's not how I do business. That's mm-hmm. just not how I do it. Mm-hmm. If you're concerned that I may not be accurately calculating the discounts, let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. And let me perhaps share with you some original invoices, you know, which is easy to do, right? I can forward you five original invoices and you can verify with your own eyes that you have in fact been charged the accurate amount. But what I'm not going to do is add a step to our already busy work routine and accommodate this new Excel spreadsheet documentation you're looking to create for yourself. That's not, that's not what we signed up to do. It's so easy for me to say that it's not my client and I don't have this exciting construction project in Florida that I risk losing, but that really is the moment where things went wrong. And on a recent episode, I was talking about if you give a mouse a cookie, I don't know if it was a regular podcast or a members only podcast, but you know, that story, if you give a mouse a cookie, then then they're going to want a glass of milk. So that's what happened. You gave him a cookie by inputting those numbers and now he wants more and then he'll want Mm -hmm. more and then he'll want more. And in my experience, you just kind of have to shut that down. Okay. So maybe I opened the floodgate when I said, sure, let me reconcile the account. Let's, let's do all of the, make sure all the calculations are right. Like I, I maybe was like too transparent perhaps, um, or too kind of accommodating of his, uh, his need to do spreadsheets. <laughs> Listen, I, there's no judgment coming from me because it's a really tricky situation to be in, but I do know when I, when I, when things continue to escalate and escalates a harsh word, cause he's very polite and friendly, but it is escalating. He's sending you an email on Friday and a phone call on Monday. That's an escalation for sure. Then I have to look back and I have to say, what is the moment where I allowed the dynamic of how this project is going to flow to change. Mm-hmm. And that for me, it sounds like it might be that moment. Yeah. And then I also fear that there's no going back right now. We have all this construction. Okay, right? We haven't purchased any of the plumbing, any of the tile yet. Right? There's a, and then all of the trades for a kitchen, bath, like several bathroom remodels. Like it's a lot of um, contractor work, probably $200,000, $300,000 of contractor work. I hope he doesn't. I don't want him to have any communication with my contractors. Well, and (laughs) that's in your contract, right? That your contractors know that and he knows that. Okay. So then I would say now is the time to just draw a line in the sand and say, you know, whatever his name is, David, Joe, whatever it is. um, We really have done our best to be accommodating in an effort to show you that our transparency is legitimate, that we value and respect and honor the trust clients place in us. However, the the amount of time we're spending accommodating this unusual accounting request is overwhelming the office and we can't continue to do it. My staff will not continue to do it. So, you know, respectfully, we're going to complete the project, you know, as promised, and you've already verified for yourself that the pricing is accurate and let's get to the finish line together and celebrate you and your new home. And mm-hmm. see how that goes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to like literally listen back to this and like write down for and say that. Well, um, I would, scri- I would script it. Yeah. Before yeah, I picked I think it, it has up, to be. but I would be really I, clear. I get kind of emotional and I ramble and, uh, 
Yeah. I'm always respectful. I don't use, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be super aggressive, but I, I tend to get emotional about it and the speed and the rambling goes, goes up. So totally. Um, That's yeah. exactly why I script it. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to blurt out I will cut you or something crazy like that, right? Uh, like, leave me alone. Yes. <laughs> you need to die. Yeah. No, I hate, I hate when I randomly yeah. say that kind of thing. Yeah. I would script it be, and then, yeah. and I would be very careful about intonation. There's no question. There's no room for negotiation. There's yeah. no argument. And I, and I also would have to be prepared for the fact that I might lose the next job. But the reality mm-hmm. is it is escalating. Mm -hmm. And there is a certain point, right? This project, while it's a big project, I have other projects similar size to it. And completing this project in that neighborhood could get me more, you know, it's it's not like he's my only prospect, right? So um, if the worst comes to worst and we do a beautiful project and he's happy and he decides not to use us again and be disappointed by another design firm, um, we'll be okay. Because he would be, I mean, he would be like, there's how many firms in the entire universe are running in this clear, logical, linear fashion. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, we're a handful of, you know, unicorns. You Mm -hmm. you can't really have a unicorn in your hand, right? That's too big. A handful of fairy dust. (laughs) Very small, small amount, small amount. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Wow. That's, that's something I haven't, I haven't been through that, but I, but I do, we've, I think we can all relate to that moment where the client's fears or concerns begin to escalate and get more extreme and, um, needing to just redraw the boundary and restate the boundary and stand firm in the boundary is, is hard for, you know, it's hard for most of us. Uh, It's Mm -hmm. really hard for some people. I I eventually get to a point where I, you can't push me like we're done talking and I'm Mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. So, so I I am a people pleaser until a point. And then I'm like, no, we're done here. That's not Mm -hmm. how it's going. Yeah. Uh, amazing. All right. So other projects going on that are awesome and fantastic and wonderful. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, this is the first year I've been using, um, the BOD 15. I always had, you know, kind of detailed project management, um, but it just was never outlined in this, like, suit. I have the 15 steps literally right next to me here. Right? So I'm <laughs> like looking at 50, everyone has that there. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, we're, we're running projects smoothly. I'm definitely, um, not great at like following up clients are still emailing me and being like, how's my project going? Right. I, I need to kind of get that going. Um, and I have a, a client service person who's actually on your podcast, Portia Williams. Um, yeah. Uh, she was on, I found her through, through the podcast. So I, I hired her and she's going to be helping me with that Friday uh, follow up. Amazing. Um, Those updates yeah. are so important because the minute a client reaches out to me and says, what's going on with da da da, I get a sick feeling like, oh my gosh, how much time did she spend or he spend thinking about that? Now yes. they're worried. They're they're going to think they have to manage other details. So just stay ahead weekly, weekly, weekly updates yeah. more. Even if, if yeah, necessary. even if it's like, we're still waiting on all of your furniture, right? So totally. I, I said totally an update like that uh, at the end of last week, we have the pricing for the interior doors, but I still don't have the pricing for the exterior doors. If you don't mind, I'd rather wait until I have both to present it to you. And she's like, no problem. Have a great weekend. And then um, today I'll follow up again and say, if you can believe it. We're still waiting for that. You know, it's just let them know because I know it's on her mind. She's wondering when, when are we going to get our doors for the, you know, project, the contractor was supposed to purchase all the doors, but he kind of like, I don't know. He cut, he kind of, I don't know if he forgot he's busy. It's hilarious. Like I know how it goes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this is not my contractor. The project's like, you know, four hours away. So it's a, he's a very nice guy, but he's supposed to order the doors. I mean, we, they've been on the drying package for, you know, nine months already. So he hasn't ordered the doors and then it's time to, um, it's now at the point where we kind of are going to need the doors at some point. And the client says, well, we don't want to bug him because he's so busy. Would you mind getting the doors? And I'm like, does that mean that you think I'm not busy? <laughs> That's right. I think they know that you're going to handle it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go with that. But there's just yeah. this, I, there's just this thing that clients will protect contractors from nonsense and not doing what they're supposed to do, but they won't protect the designers sometimes. It's just a curious thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That might be a gender, <laughs> gender thing, perhaps. I 
be curious to talk to some of the uh, male business owners in BOD and see if they, they run into that. That's a really good, that would be such a good BOD live just to have a whole Mm -hmm. like gender night, like guys on one side, girls on the other side. Let's talk. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think it Mm -hmm. needs to be face to face though. We have to do a couple of BOD lives face to face at some point because I've I've forgotten what people look like from the neck down, which sounds, sounds weirder Mm -hmm. than I meant it to sound. (laughs) (laughs) Jerrica, it was so awesome to talk to you. You're welcome to come back on the podcast anytime. Please take the mic, take the mic over one day, pick, pick someone to interview and do it. Thank you. Really, truly be amazing. Okay. And will you please let us know if everything, uh, let us know how it works out with this client. We'll do. Yeah. I think it's going to go okay, but there might be another spreadsheet in my future, but we'll see. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Maybe you should send him a spreadsheet about various houses. I understand you have three houses. Uh, I'd like you to submit. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, or healthcare is business. (laughs) Oh dear. That would be, can you imagine how complicated a spreadsheet about healthcare would be? I don't even want to look at it. No, no. no. (laughs) Okay. Stay healthy. Stay well. It was awesome talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being part of the business of design community and supporting BOD's mission to improve the industry one design business at a time. It's time for you to take the next step and join Business of Design. Like thousands of design professionals in 50 countries around the world, you'll find the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to dramatically improve your business and transform your life. What are you waiting for? Start today 